Proverbs chapter 22. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Now this is character. This is somebody's character. You can have all the riches in the world, but if your name is mud, if you have no favor or kindness, and you're a screw, you're down, you're, you're low, low cat class, you're a deceiver, then you're no good. It's better to be, hey, I know that person, that person, he's got a good name, a good reputation, a good character, rather than being a bum. The rich and poor meet together. Revelation 20, verse 12. And death and hell gave up the dead that were in them, cast in the lake of fire, and the, and the, the great, the, the small and great, stood before God, the great white throne judgment. The Lord is the maker of them all. Your race, your color, your being is not decided upon your richness and your boredom. God decided. Well, we're going to have a government where we're going to we're going to tax the rich to give to the poor and, and socialism and everything like that. It, God, you can have that government where we're going to steal from the rich and going to give to the poor. But God, Jesus Christ said, "You with the poor, you'll always have with you." So a government's not the answer. God is. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. You know, th th there's a storm coming. Lock everything up, batten everything down, and. Let's see if I need protection, if I know where to go. Um, that person is a questionable character. That person is just going to stay away from him. <coughs> oh, my boy. But the simple pass on and are punished. So a simpleton, we see. He doesn't study things out. He just moves along with life. And he gets challenged. He gets troubles. He gets problems. He gets the conduct of his not studying the matter out. Not showing to see things are proper and right. People get swindled. People get scammed. Well... You know, the, the old saying is you can't scam a scammer. If you're not looking to make a fast buck and do make money illegally, you're not going to fall for a scam. You're going to turn away from it. A prudent man will look at the matter and the simple man will look and... Okay, let's do it. By humility... And the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. God given to you riches. God given to you honor. And God given you life. When God gives you riches because you fear him and you're not proud. That's a blessing from God. And when we get our eternal gold, silver, and precious stones. There will be honor from Jesus to say, well done. As we are passed off into life. Eternal life. God may give us riches when we're on this earth. He may. Or he may not. Look at the life of Paul. God took care of Paul. But Paul didn't have an overabundance of a purse. 
thorns and snares or traps are in the way of the forward. The path of the most vile, wicked man hurts, and there are pitfalls, and they build video games around this character. Yeah, you gotta go through the path, and you know, you gotta jump over this, this snare, and you gotta, you know, go through this bushes and all that. There are games built upon and making money off thorns and snares in the way, trying to prevent the forward man from continuing the path he's going. You know, get out of the path you're going. It's not right. It's not correct. It's hurting you. It's trapping you. It's wasting your time. He that does keep his soul from far from them. When you do right, you're not going to have the thorn. You're not going to have the trap. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, there are exceptions to the causes of that rule. That's not a bound, certified rule that you could raise a child right. And when he does fail, I would hate to see the conscience that God has laid on his heart and his life. But it is the parent's responsibility to guide that child in the way he is to go. And when you raise that child up from childhood and that child gets old and goes about the worldly way, and you say, oh, why is my child doing that? What did you train him to do? Oh, you know, we live worldly, we live ungodly and all that, but we expect our child to... That ain't going to happen. That's not the, the law of, of sowing and reap, reaping. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. You're going to get worse. You're going to get more than what you put in. The rich... Rules over the poor. And we saw that God makes the rich and makes the poor. The rich rules over the poor. Because the rich has the money. And this world's run by money. How do you know that this world ain't right and all that? Because it runs by money. It doesn't run by holiness. The borrower, the borrower, that's the first time borrower shows up, is a servant to the lender. You borrow money from somebody, you are under the custody of that person that you borrow the money from. It's plain and simple. You owe to that person. That person is in charge of you. And the government's got it such a way with electricity and water and sewer, you are indebted to the government. Hold on. I gotta fix that later. You go to work. To make a living to pay your bills. If you didn't have any bills, you didn't. You, you just need to go to work to, for food. And people get more than what they come in, and they become in debt. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity nothing. And that's against the rules of sowing and reaping. Usually, when you plant something in the ground, something will come out. 
you plant marigold seeds, and you're going to get marigold seeds. You plant corn, you're going to get corn. You plant iniquity, and you end up with nothing. <laughs> Excuse me. A Christian that is a life of iniquity is going to get wood, hay, or stubble, and when it's put to the fire, the judgment seat of Christ, he's got ashes, no reward, no gold, no silver, no precious stone. And the rod of his anger shall fail. He's sowing iniquity, and he gets nothing, and then he gets angry. Because he's sowing iniquity, and God says his anger will be with what he got, vanity. So there is no outcome of vanity, uh, of iniquity, and you get vanity. He that has a bountiful eye, first time that word shows up, bountiful, a prosperous, overabundant, shall be blessed, made happy, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. God encourage, encourages to help the poor. God says there will always be poor. And I'm telling you, in, in 2020, you got to make sure that that person is poor and liable for you to help. Now, notice it says bread. It doesn't say money. There's been a few times I've given money, but usually I will try to provide food. That's the proper means. Somebody's got to sign, oh, I will work for. And here's the test. And let's say there's a fast food restaurant or a convenience store. And or even a grocery store. And here is somebody with a sign, I need money or whatever it be. And you go up to him and say, well, you have need? He goes, yeah, I have need. I'll tell you what, I'll go over to that store, that restaurant, and I'll get you a meal with chips and a soda or water, whatever you want. I will provide you a, a little meal for now to satisfy your hunger. And maybe something... A little extra. But I'm not going to give you money. And I can tell you right now, I, I, was in, I, I can see, the, I can see the, the convenience store I was in front of. And I told the guy that he come up, well, I need some money. And I said, well, I'm going to the grocery store. I'm going to that convenience store. I, I, I was working. I said, I'll get back out of my truck and we'll go in there and we'll get you something. Well, no, 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 give me the money now and I'll get something later. I said, no, we'll get it now. You can have it later. And we went around the bush. I said, no, you just want money. And you don't want food. You want money for something else. And I ain't giving it. And you've got to take the, the circumstances. And you've got to examine the people you're dealing with. And you've got to use wisdom and prudence. But notice the Bible says bread and not money. Though you will find times in the Bible that, yeah, there was money given. The man that was lame at the temple, he was expecting John and, and Peter to give money. Well, they gave him something better than money. They gave him a healing and they gave him Jesus. You ever think about that? I remember, I don't know who the preacher was. It was so, it was, it was almost comical. I hate to say comical, but I don't mean ha ha. <clears throat> there was a preacher one time. I don't remember who it was. He said, you got to think about these people that Jesus healed. The blind, 
were given sight. The lame were able to walk. He says, all those people that were healed, the, the, the devils that were cast out, the next day they had to go get a job. They couldn't beg and ask money no more. They're physically fit. And you wonder how many of them, oh man, now I've got to work. Thanks a lot, Jesus. Cast out the scorner. This one. You got a scorner in your church. You got a scorner in your business. You got a scorner in your family. Cast them out. And contention, quarrel, shall go out. It is simple. You've got to apply church discipline. You've got to apply family discipline to get the troubles out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease when you get rid of the root of the matter. He that loveth pureness of heart He that love is pureness of heart. You want to do right. For the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. The king is Jesus. And Jesus will be pure with you if you love your pureness of your heart. And yeah, you may sin and confess your sins, but you want to do right. And then you've got a friend in Jesus. But you're not going to have a friendly Jesus when you, you don't want to do right. When going to church and, and stuff like that become a burden. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge. We also read the eyes of the Lord behold the evil and the good. And he that overthroweth the words of the transgressor. God will get the final say. God will get the last word. The slothful man saith, there's a lion without. Now there were lions around in the Bible times. But the guy is using the lion as an excuse. I shall be slain in the streets. It's an excuse. It's an excuse not to do anything. There's a lion. He's going to kill me. Well, you know the lion's there. You can go around the lion. I'd be like someone saying, they, they, they turn on, on the news... The, tra the traffic report. Well, the highway's closed because of an accident. Uh, I, I can't go to work. You can go around. You can call your boss and say, boss, you know, there's an accident. Other employees are going to be late, maybe, and I'm going to be late. I'm going to go around. You just don't say, okay, there's an accident. And I'm, I'm not going. I'm not going to do. It may not be that bad of a deal of an accident. It might get cleared up when you get in that area. The mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. That's not good. And watch this. He that is abhorred, hated of the Lord, shall fall therein. God says, I hate you. I hate everything you do. And I'm going to get you involved with that strange woman. And I'm going to have you to fall. Now the, that's not the liberal God. That's not the loving pansy God. Why are there so many religions out there? 
because God's giving you what you want. And it's funny because it st says strange woman and mystery Babylon. And churches are called after the female sex. People get involved in Islam because they want to be involved in Islam. It is so foolish and stupid for a woman, American woman, to get involved in, in, in the unfreedom of the female in Islam. But that's what she wants. We, the last couple days, we've been preaching and teaching to bikers about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've taught them and, and preached to them and given gospel tracts how to get out of bondage, how to get saved, how to please God. Some of those bikers we met yesterday and today are going to fall deep into a pit. They're going to get their lives ruined. They're going to get in worse mess and trouble. Why? Because you heard the message, you heard the gospel, you heard what God approves of, and you want you want something else. God's like, okay, go for it. There she is. And that's the same God that says, I'm not willing that any should perish. But if you go so far, there it is. You're involved in that mess because you want to be involved in that mess. And I will send a preacher, I will send a, a, a gospel tract, I will send a church, I will send a Christian in your path. And they will tell you, hopefully, what you need to do, but you're going to get deeper in that pit because you're not going to listen. And people say, God hates the sinner, and uh, God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. That's not what that verse says. You don't know what the word whore is. That means hate. The guy that God hates. He that is a whore. He that is hated of the Lord. So you can take God hates the sin, but he loves the sin. You can take that and throw it in the garbage can according to the scripture. And you have not ever read... You have never read... Boy, my mouth is off today. Fox's Book of Martyrs. There are people who just gone so far into sin. And God can save anybody and everybody. But there are people just, you know, they just got so angered God that nope. God told Jeremiah about the, the children of Judah. Don't even pray for them. I'm not going to listen. Samuel is crying and weeping over the sins and over the troubles of King Saul. And God's like, I'm not listening to you, buddy. I'm done with him, I told you. Now you get your oil and you go over to Jesse and you're going to anoint one of his sons. I've had it with Samuel. I I've had it with Saul. You mean the loving, liberal God? God's like, I've had it. Solomon Gomorrah got to the point, God says, okay, I'm done. But there's one just man. You pull that one just man out, and then you destroy that city. All the world is in violence. All right, you put eight men in that ark and everybody else. I'm done with them. I've had it. And there's coming a time in the future. All right, you... Jesus, go get your bride. Call your bride away. Everybody else, I've had it. That's not a God that's preached in the churches today. Foolishness is bound in the heart of the child. A child is foolish. And yet the world tries to listen to him. But the rod of correction whoa, shall drive it far from him. Bible says, in the behind is the rearing of a child. Why? Because he's foolish. 
The Bible says correction with a rod. I don't care what the people say. I don't care what, what science says. I don't care what education says. I don't care what the government says. They're not the ones that have to bring up your child. They're not the ones who are going to cry because your child turned out to be a loser. And they're probably not even going to cry when your child is cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. They probably won't even say care. 